Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of my class series. Last episode, we talked about fighters, also known as bruisers, and the reception was amazing. So thank you all so much for the support. As per your request, the next episode will be discussing slayers. Widely viewed as the most contentious class in the game, bearing quite the selection of champions who are well known for their supposed lack of counterplay. If you remember in the first episode, I talked about the class trinity, tank, healer, and DPS. Fighters were a hybrid between DPS and tank class, but Slayers are the melee counterpart to Marksman, both of whom represent pretty much the epitome of DPS, and the two subclasses that make up this category are Assassins and Skirmishers. Damage in any game comes in three different forms, front-loaded, sustained, and back-loaded. Back-loaded damage is when a champion or attack becomes stronger the longer the battle draws out for, so if you can't take down these types of DPS units fast enough, you're almost certainly going to get destroyed. However, they're often pretty weak at the start of a fight, which means if you can take them out quickly, they're going to have no chance to show off their stuff. Juggernauts such as Darius, Set, and Garen are League's backloaded damage dealers since they all have abilities that are best saved for an explosive finish. Sustained damage, as the name implies, is someone who can output the same amount of DPS very consistently from the start of the fight to the end of the fight. Even though ideally they shine best in long-lasting battles, they're not too shabby at getting the ball rolling compared to backloaded. Many skirmishers and marksmen are placed in this section. Kane, Silas, Kogma, Jinx, etc. They're all able to hold a very solid uptime and can enter battle at a moment's notice, but they have enough in their tank to last a pretty long time. Then we have front-loaded, which is commonly known as burst damage, characters who are able to dish out the bulk of their DPS right out the gate, and more often than not, it is strong enough to dispatch most vulnerable targets. However, front-loaded units are not exactly the best at maintaining their pressure after their first rotation, and generally, they have to buy time for their combo to be available again. Assassins and burst mages occupy this category, Zoe, Annie, Talon, and Fizz. Much of the Slayer's class popularity stems from three attributes. They're almost all front-loaded or sustained damage dealers, meaning they're fast to action. More specifically in solo queue, League games are very unpredictable. A full-blown team fight can break out the moment one player on either team finds an opening or loses patience, so it pays to have someone who is ready to go at all times. Second, Slayers are not only fast in damage but in mobility. This means they have the potential to dodge certain enemy attacks that would otherwise be impossible on a slower champion. Most hard crowd control abilities are skill shots as well. Lastly, their independence. While they're not as durable as fighters, slayers are all self-sufficient and generally need no support or backup to do their job. Though, of course, any supplementation is always appreciated. I sort of already alluded to the difference between assassins and skirmishers. Assassins are bursty and skirmishers are sustained damage. But there are two other things I want to talk about, the similarities between the two and their differences. The most notable contrast aside from their damage type is that of who they can damage. Slayers in general can get around pretty fast, but skirmishers have most of their mobility locked down to combat and don't travel very far. They don't have long range dashes or high enough tempo like divers and assassins to bypass the enemy frontline and go for their carries. To compensate for this, they're extremely good against fighters and tanks. Since most of them can shred through defensive itemization more effectively, they usually come equipped with percent health damage, true damage, armor penetration, or a mixture of all of them. And if they don't have it in their kit, they usually build items that grant those attributes like Kraken Slayer, Blade of the Ruined King, Black Cleaver, what have you. Assassins are also much more vulnerable to counterattack because they don't have as much durability nor the luxury to build most defensive items. Skirmishers can pick up a couple since they only need 2 or 3 offensive items, and their build more or less aligns with that of divers. That and they come with a lot more sustain or survival tools to protect from burst. Overall though, both subclasses perform rather poorly in teamfights if they can't single out a target, and any form of disengage or disruption can buy squishy carries enough time to lock them down and erase them before they can refocus. At this point, the idea that slayers are among the most despised, if not the most, is like a giant elephant in the room. Everyone knows about how frustrating they are to play against, but no one sides with it because we all abuse them at one point or another ourselves. In fact, despite their higher than average difficulty, Slayers make up a large portion of autofill picks. How many times have you seen a support main first time Yasuo or jungle main get autofill top and play Riven? They're certainly all very fun to play since by nature they're a very skill expressive roster, arguably the most popular one as well. Riot continues to make more and more of them. Out of the past 20 new releases, Slayers comprise 8 of them. Kane, Pike, Silas, Kiana, Lilia, Yone, Viego, and Gwen. League of Legends has 7 classes, and Slayers take up 40% of the past 20 champions released. 
Even for fighters and tanks, assassins and skirmishers are not exactly the most pleasant to face in battle, and heaven knows mages, marksmen, and enchanters see assassins as the most broken class in the game due to how helpless they make them feel. I talked about how divers and juggernauts face a lot of scrutiny with how invincible they can be especially when ahead, but given their inherent limitations, more specifically in terms of their mobility and or damage, no one feels like they're impossible to deal with. Sure, you might run into a game where the enemy Darius 1v9 pentadunks, but you also probably see the same number of Dariuses who intend feed early game and stay irrelevant for the rest of the match. But, no matter how far behind the enemy slayer is, you just can't ignore them for even a little bit because a 3 item Talon can still probably effortlessly explode a 5 item Caitlyn. If Yora survives into the late game, she can and will beat down just about every single fighter in the game. Something about Slayers just makes them a constant threat. Even if you do everything right in the laning phase, the ever-looming danger of them finding and exploiting even the smallest crack in your armor is what gives this class their infamy. Why does it feel like there's absolutely nothing an ADC can do if the enemy assassin gets fed? Why is it that even if you shut down Trindamir in lane and get like 4 solo kills on him, he still 2 shots towers and beats you even when you're up a full item on him? Why is it that Slayers feel like they have zero counterplay? To answer this, let's look at some other classes and see what their key weaknesses are, as well as the tools and access the average team has to be able to capitalize on them. Tanks are known for being extremely durable and disruptive. They're the best at soaking up damage for long periods of time in order to draw aggro away from the squishy carries. But there's no shortage of ways to deal with them or even circumvent them altogether. Because tanks are generally slow and clunky, a faster champion has no trouble skirting around them. Divers are pretty good at straight up pushing through them while assassins can sneak around using their stealth or higher mobility. Also, there's a lot of anti-tank items in the game. Black Cleaver, Kraken Slayer, Surreal Grudge, and Void Staff to name a few. Mages, Fighters, Slayers, and Marksmen are all able to break through a tank's defense to some degree. Marksmen have long range and very high DPS. If given the time and space, they can single-handedly cover the damage quota for their team. However, their survivability is among the worst in the game since they need to prioritize building full damage, but don't carry the same kind of mobility or disengage that others might have. Without backup, all it takes is 1 or 2 seconds for an assassin or diver to beat the living daylights out of them, and mages often carry far more burst damage or range to blast ADCs to kingdom come. Furthermore, there's a lot of defensive items in the game specifically tailored to stop marksmen. You have plated steel caps, which everyone knows as ninja tappy, thorn mail, randuin's omen, that item was made for AD carries, and frozen heart. Even one is enough to hold them at bay for the better part of a game. It's only when they reach like 5 or 6 items that armor tends to suck, but how often does the game get to that point? Lastly, fighters. Even though they're really good at absorbing damage and dishing it out, a shortcoming shared among a lot of them is their straightforwardness. They have no choice but to run straight at you. So even though it's going to take a lot of effort to bring him down, it becomes a match of which side can outlast the other. Can the bruiser finish you off before you can or vice versa? It's because they have no choice but to face any returning fire head on that things like crowd control work a lot better on them. Also, Bramble Vest counters pretty much every AD fighter in the game, so there's that. Each class has a general overall weakness that not only very effectively shuts them down, but there's also an easy or at least widely accessible way to stop them such as an item. The source of a slayer's strength is their speed. Ah, that was a lot of S's. Assassins and skirmishers alike specialize in hitting you hard and fast, with the former being so fast that by the time you realize they're within striking distance, you're already dead. I mentioned earlier that, normally, all it takes to stop a slayer dead in their tracks is with the get off me tool such as a Janna ultimate and Alistar headbutt. But considering how quick they can output their burst damage, unless an AD carry is sitting right on top of their support, it doesn't matter if you have any source of peel because they can either dodge it or snap you in the blink of an eye. This is made even more difficult to accomplish in the heat of battle. When fists are flying, swords are swinging, and everyone's mashing buttons, the carries may be too busy focusing down the enemy frontline or fighters that an assassin can sneak right behind you during all that chaos when your attention is divided. And even if you are keeping an eye out, some champions can literally reach you without you being able to see them, like Shaco, Kha'Zix, and Evelyn. Remember, all they need is not but the shortest moment, the tiniest opportunity, that is more than enough for them to get in and out. Skirmishers may not be able to hop over walls like Talon, or they won't be able to sneak into a fight like Shaco, but what they all have is some sort of defensive tool that prevents you from being able to easily respond to them. Fiora has Riposte, 
Meshi has Alpha Strike, Gwen has Hollowed Mist, Yasuo has Windwall, Trindamir is unkillable, Jax has Counter Strike. These champions can all very easily engage on you while temporarily preventing you from stopping them at least with that ability. And even if you're able to bait out those attacks, you still have to deal with their overwhelming damage output. Both types of slayers can kill you thrice in the time it takes you to kill them once. Juggernauts and some divers can't output damage fast enough to break through shields or sustain. So as long as your Soraka is spamming W or your Lulu is spamming shields, you should be able to at least hold on long enough to have a chance at beating them before they do you. But against slayers, that may not even be a possibility. Moreover, there is practically no universal answer to stopping this class, assassins in particular. I mentioned earlier about how there are armor items tailored specifically to stop marksmen, but there's no item or resource that directly stops slayers. Any form of defense that could be used against them only does so for a very brief moment. Zanya's Hourglass puts you in stasis for 2.5 seconds, but that doesn't stop you from taking damage once you pop back out. Banshee's Veil gives you a spell shield, but as I mentioned before, Slayers can very easily kill you 3 times over with just one rotation of their abilities if you're squishy. Kha'Zix doesn't care if you absorb his E or W damage because Q does 90% of your health. Even one-hit wonders like Fizz and Zed don't care if you absorb their ultimate because their basic abilities still do more than enough. One might argue Exhaust is a consistent way to stop assassins and skirmishers. Yes, but often champions in either subclass have ways to protect themselves for a tiny bit to wait out Exhaust since it only lasts 3 seconds, and again, you have to use it quickly since they can burst you down in a quarter of a second. The thing about Slayers that frustrates so many people is that they're the only class in the game whose counterplay is skill-based. There's no class of champions that hard counter Slayers because assassins can bypass tanks and kite out fighters, while Slayers just chainsaw everyone so long as they're not being focused down by all 5 members of the enemy team. There's no item squishy champions can build that is constantly active, constantly in effect that deters assassins. As a mage, you have to figure out when is the best time to use Zanyas and if you mistime it, you're screwed. As a support, you have to figure out when to use Exhaust or lock it, and if you mistime it, you're screwed. If you have a spell shield like Edge of Night or Banshee's Veil, it blocks only one attack. Assassins and Slayers might not care because chances are they still have enough damage to kill you. Also, since Assassins usually build armor penetration items, what little defense carries can build become completely worthless. Fortunately, in Season 11, Immortal Shield Bow has been released, which allows Marksmen to build an anti-burst item without compromising too much on damage. But Slayers also received an item that counters that, Serpent's Fang. Now, I know for the past 12 minutes or so, I made it sound like Slayers are the most broken class in existence, but the blade cuts both ways. Even though there's no 100% effective 24-7 counter towards Slayers, there's also no 100% effective 24-7 way for them to win. Slayers are the class most influenced by a player's own micro and macro mechanics, more than mages, more than fighters, more than marksmen. Even though it might sound stupid that the only counterplay assassins and skirmishes have is how bad they are, that's a really big deal. 99% of the time, the reason players are hard stuck and ranked is not because their champion is weak, but because they're just bad at the game. Slayers are by far the most useless class of champions in the hands of a bad player, because they're also the only class that doesn't have a clear goal. There is no when in doubt solution for them if things ever turn south. A fighter's job is to absorb pressure and deal as much damage to anyone as possible before they go down. A mage's job is to shoot anything that moves, so is an AD carry's job to shoot anything that moves. A tank's job is to try to lock down some high priority target or protect their own. No matter how bad you are as a player, you can at least do what your class is supposed to do and achieve some result. Assassins and skirmishers do have a job, take down the enemy carries. But unlike tanks and fighters who can soak up a ton of damage, slayers can't. Just like how mistiming or misusing any defensive counters towards slayers makes you a vulnerable target, any defensive abilities they mistime or misuse makes them extremely easy to focus down. Is it good or bad that the only real way to counter slayers is by outplaying them? Yes and no. On one hand, that's how a competitive game should be. It should not be a contest of rock, paper, scissors, I beat you because I bought this item or I beat you because I played this champion. That being said, the fact that this applies to only slayers and not every other class in the game is what makes it a bad thing. It either has to be everyone or not at all. That's why to so many players it feels like the class is zero counterplay, because any counterplay that does exist is largely dependent on how careless or reckless the person playing the slayer is and how good their opponents are at dealing with them. So, I'm sure many of you have some very vocal opinions on the class, so let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Or on the other hand, do you have a counter-argument to my points, that'd be cool to hear. 
Although just a fair warning, I'd imagine ADC mains probably won't listen to a word you say since they have too much PTSD from getting one shot. Either way, let me know your thoughts, and just like the first episode, I'd appreciate some feedback on whether or not you like this one and want me to cover the other classes in the future. If you enjoyed this video, a rating would be much appreciated, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subbing to the channel. Also, check out the description below the video for links to my Discord and social media, as well as a playlist containing all my discussion episodes if you'd like to watch more. But that's it for today, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.